Hello everyone, uh, my name is Farzad Jafar Kazemi, an associate professor of mechanical engineering in South Tehran branch of Islamic Azad University. I'm with you in this semester for solar energy application. This is the second session. In the first one we discussed about renewable energy and now we want to start photovoltaic and uh, in the photovoltaic we want to start from applications. We'll discuss about other topics later. This course is for our international students, especially the students from Iraq or Afghanistan. As you can see here, solar energy applications can be divided into three main parts. Solar thermal, which is generally about solar heating. And concentrated solar power, or CSP, which is generally about um, providing very high temperatures. The high temperature may be used then for provide power, desalination, cooling, or some other applications. And PV. Today we want to discuss about PV, or solar electricity production. We will discuss about other topics, the two other ones, later. What are the applications for the PV? As you can see here in the picture, PV may be applied, for example, from a very small application like a solar calculator. You may have one of them. With the very uh, large ones, like the big power plant, as you can see in the background, this is a power plant, solar power plant in Iran. So if one asks you in the future that, may I, for example, it's possible to run a, um, for example, run an electric motor, a big electric motor with uh, solar energy, the answer is yes. If I can run, for example, provide the power required to uh, for a city, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Technically, it's possible, but from the economic point of view, there are some other considerations, which we may discuss about them later. The first application, or the oldest application for photovoltaic, is the remote area application in the residential ones. Residential means, for example, a small village, which is far from the grid, generally, uh, for a government to decide if uh, they provide power, the grid, to, uh, for example, for or remote villages, the population of that village and the distance from the grid. Uh, also, the climate of the village or community is important. For example, it should have adequate sunny days. By the way, these are examples of uh, villages or communities, a small community is provided by PV. Another remote application, which is not residential, is a weather station. In the weather stations, which are generally in remote areas, you have anemometers, air temperature measurement devices, radiation meter, uh, meters, or something like this. And these are all, all, not all, but some of them generally need power. The power may be provided by the PV. Seismic stations are another very interesting application. These are very important, actually, application of the PV. Uh, and uh, the reason for using PV in these stations is clear. Another application for the photovoltaic is uh, telecommunication stations, or as we name it, BTS stations. In these stations, generally, you need power to run the devices and equipments which are available there and these are located generally as you can see in the figure in the bottom right on the mountains or somewhere like this and generally there is no grid available in these places so you may provide the electricity required by the PV or even by combining PV with diesel combining PV with wind or something like this This is also another application for the PV in remote areas, and this cathodic protection. Cathodic protection is a method to protect the oil and gas buried pipelines from the corrosion, and there's a DC electric current is required in this case, which can be, pro can be provided by the photovoltaic. Measurement instrument in remote areas like the pressure or temperature or flow meter as you can see here in the picture uh, another application for PV powered uh, measurement devices. The device shown here in the left is a flow meter 
uh, um, uh, I think it's a magnetic electromagnetic flow meter and as you can see because there's a power required and the power may be provided but the battery and the battery will be charged by the uh, solar panel also they may provide for example a SCADA or, uh, the, or means for uh, sending the data to another location and these all require power this is also another application which is going to be very common generally CCTV cameras are used in the big areas like for example big garden big land big factories or workshops when there may there the power or electric grid may not be available in each corner of the land and these may be used for uh, the, uh, po the purpose portable solar systems are very good application also another very good application uh, portable means you can uh, uh, take it with yourself for example for the people who move from one location to another uh, they are not stationary uh, at a place or for example for camps holidays or something like this for emergency this is also a very important application for emergency situations and as you can see the panel connect is connected to the uh, the bag is shown here, to the device shown here, there's a battery in it and there are sockets uh, like the one you can see here in the next picture which can provide the power required for the lamps or there are generally the, provi the manufacturer provides some type of sockets uh, for different uh, mobiles to be charged also. Uh, please note that the output of these devices may be also AC uh, while it adds to the cost but then you need AC appliances but if there is no inverter in it then the output power will be DC and your appli appliances mm, should be also DC type uh, if these are uh, somewhat larger like the one you can see here we generally name them solar generators and these may be these are also portable but you cannot for example easily uh, do that uh, these are for the applications where more power or energy is required and there are a lot of application for that solar chargers uh, which are generally you no know, mobile chargers are another very interesting application as you can see here you can put the solar panel like this or this in the Sun or even attach it to your bag and uh, when the sun is available then it will charge your mobile generally these have no batteries because it adds to the cost and weight of the device and uh, it is possible it's possible to have the battery but generally it is not common oh this is a very interesting one also i'm not sure if you wear them but they are available and solar power jackets or another very interesting application there are a lot of progress on going in this application to make it more fashionable or something like this flexible solar panels have different applications for example you can see here on the right on a tent or something like this here and these are also very good application and interesting ones oh this is my favorite application I think it may be yours also and this is solar toy Solar toys may be somewhat sophisticated, like the one you can see here, in the here or here or here, which are generally manufactured by big companies, or you may provide it in your home also for your kids. For example, you may buy this solar panel from the shop nearby and then assemble all these together, a small DC motor you may buy and then try to put all these together and make fun or even may make business why not solar lantern or another application for remote areas uh, and this is also in the same category which may be a solar torch oh this is also a very interesting one as uh, most of the students in this class are from Iraq I think this may be a good application for providing cool in summer where as I heard there are a lot of power shortages and uh, I invite you to do that for the next summer for your family you may make one of them uh, buy a DC motor from a shop from an electric shop 
I think you have a lot of them buy a solar panel and connect them and also a fan a simple fan there is no need to buy such a fan but you may provide just protect them be aware of the dangers and uh, put the solar panel outside your home on, on the roof or outside the window and when there is a hot it's hot and there is a power shortage uh, enjoy the method I provided for you there are also as you can see sophisticated and uh, in the market fans as you can see here and you can buy them uh, the fan may be also applied in such an application where there is a need to ventilate a workshop for example or store uh, you may saw these devices where birds which are installed on the roof of the workshop and it, they will rotate when there is a wind but what we can do if there is no wind then the better solution may be to use a solar ventilation system there is a fan beneath the under the solar panel and it will suck the air from the store when the sun shines on the panel traffic control lights are another very interesting application either like the one you can see here on the bottom or for example alarm lights like this one or these which is generally buried in the two sides of the highways you may saw them uh, this is an application for example in Iran uh, you may see such an application in your country also <coughs> garden lights these are also an imp interesting application as you can see there's a solar panel here or here there's a battery in it and then there's a lamp and it can be turned on turn on during the night uh, this may be in a more sophisticated type like this one uh, here there's a panel here on the top there's a battery under it and uh, there's a DC lamp generally there is the lamp is generally DC because we do not want to add to the cost by providing an inverter and then an AC lamp uh, this is an application uh, I got the picture in Tehran and you I'm sure that you have seen also this. another very interesting application which actually I think belongs to the future uh, I mean it's uh, it will be in the market more in the future is uh, the application in transport vehicles either road sea or air or even trains this is solar impulse a very important a very famous a very known well known aircraft which uh, you may ref I, I refer you to the website solarimpulse.com if I'm not and you can see a lot of more information there uh, PV also may be applied for the boats to provide some of the power required for some auxiliary devices maybe uh, this is also another application in the transport vehicles the, here you can see in the bottom a race car which is from the Kazvin Azad University or even uh, for real application like this one here in Mashhad for example uh, you may see also such a, a panels on the roof on the roof of a car uh, please do not um, think that these may run the car or provide all the power required to run the car generally these are used I don't, I'm not sure if it's from Toyota or uh, Audi uh, it may be used for example to run a fan when the car is stopped or idle in the sun in summer for example and the AC is not on you may experience it that when you go in and there's a very hot uh, hot uh, situation in the car but 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 there are there are a lot of work being done to use these uh, to manufacture cars which are totally powered by solar energy like the one you can see here by university and this one also which is manufactured in US and I think it will be in the market within the next years you may refer to the site shown here for more information solar power may also be used to charge the car please note that this is not a solar car it's a an electric car or EV 
electric vehicle uh, the power may be provided either from the grid or the solar charger uh, please note that the in this uh, this is a very uh, this is a very interesting topic to work on it you may refer to i refer you to the reference shown in the below for example here you can see that there are different modes of application possible for example you can charge your vehicles here number one during the day from solar power in the night when you are at home you may charge your uh, vehicle from the grid because there is no solar solar power available at that time or even if you have extra uh, power in your car and you have you, you may sh you may feed it to the grid as you can see here we name it vehicle to the grid or v2g or even you may uh, feed the surplus power or extra power which is available in solar panels on the roof to the grid for example when you are out of home and there is no power, power consumer in the room in the house a very interesting application i think this is again another very interesting application in iraq and i advise to do research on that to see what is going on in this area in iraq uh, desalination desalination of the sea water or brackish water brackish water application may be more common in your country uh, there are two types of uh, desalination process one is the thermal process or phase change here you evaporate for example seawater or brackish water and then condense the vapor and this will be the fresh water we will discuss about this later for the time being forget it come here uh, in this method which is named the membrane method there is no phase change and so they are named single phase process here the brackish or saline water or seawater is pushed by force through small very tiny holes here as you can see uh, which is named membrane uh, there are different methods that are actually possible the ED or RO here I'm uh, discussing about the RO or reverse osmosis method in this method solar power here provides the power and then it comes to the inverter if required I mean if the pump has an ACE has an, has an AC motor the pump uh, pumps the saline or brackish water after some pretreatments it goes to the RO unit reverse osmosis unit you can see the a picture from the RO uh, unit here there's a membrane in it the high pressure pump pushes the water through the membrane and what comes out from the right side is fresh water and more salinated water which is named brine is disposed here and this is a very interesting application think about that in your country these are some applications either a stationary one like the one you can see here on the top or the portable one as you can see in the bottom this is also my favorite uh, favorite application as I have a book on that I have written a book on solar cooling is in Persia uh, there are different methods for solar cooling solar uh, cooling may be classified as evaporative cooling, vapor compression cooling, adsorption, absorption, desiccant, or as we name them, solar thermal cooling, and other methods like the thermoelectric, magnetic, vortex, and some other ones. The ones shown here in green are the ones that can be powered by PV or photovoltaic. The other, which is shown in blue, uh, which uh, belongs to the solar thermal cooling classification will be discussed later uh, the first one is evaporative cooling as you can see solar PV can be combined with evaporative coolers there is a motor in it which rotates the fan and a pump also both require uh, power electric power which totally or by part may be provided by the PV panels uh, generally if you use the same motor as is available in the evaporative cooler then the, it's, a, it's an AC motor and you need an inverter but there is possible to use other type of motors BD motors and DC motors uh, you may uh, I refer you to the websites or uh, references to know more about that um, 
freeze or uh, fr refrigerators or freezers also may be combined with photovoltaic here you can see how the combination works the power from the DC is fed to the refrigerator or freezer as you can see here you may know that the power from the PV is a DC power and a compressor if it's uh, an AC motor it's an AC motor then you need an inverter also here and if the compressor motor is a DC one which is available now in the market then there is no inverter required and uh, also there may be a battery required here because you may want to use the fridge when the sun is not available in the night or in some consequent cloudy days for example also there's a possibility to use batteryless fridges where different innovations are ongoing in this area for example some manufacturer may use a PCM PCM is a phase change material for example ice is also a simple phase change material the um, cooled may be stored in the PCM and then when you require you may cool the uh, space the fridge space with the PCM you may search about that also to know more about that search about phase change material cooling storage okay cool the storage also may be powered by solar PV you can see here uh, and a small one a small one in the top right and also a very big one in Holland in the bottom left room air conditioners either the window type or a split types uh, may be powered by the PV by, by PV or photovoltaic or even they, there may be a combination of both for example here you can see the, uh, this, this split type air conditioner is also uh, is, is powered both by the panels on the left and also power from the grid may be used as a backup if required uh, this application can be extended to larger applications for example the chillers, vapor compression chillers you can see here uh, combination and how it works for example the power from the panels come here to the chiller if it's adequate then there is no need to take the power from the grid but if it is not adequate then you can take the power also from the grid and interestingly if there is no application for the chiller you can fit the power to the grid and enjoy the money you will earn another very interesting application I think in Iraq is also so solar water pumping do search about that and see what's going on in your country about solar water pumping in this system the power provided by the PV as you can see here in the picture is fed to the pump the pump may be either submerged like the one you can see here or maybe out of the water both are possible if the pump is uh, has uh, an AC pump uh, AC motor then you should provide uh, you should have also an inverter but if the motor is a DC motor then there is no inverter required then you can pump the water to the to an elevated tank as you can see here actually the elevated tank works uh, as a battery because you may pump the water to the tank when the sun is available and use the tank water when the sun is not available or even both together please note that if you need a high pressure at the outlet of the pump then there may be a battery also required because for example suppose that you need a pressure of 5 bar at the outlet then if you want to use a elevated uh, an elevated tank then you put you should put it at an elevation of 50 meter if you require uh, to have a uh, five bar pressure and and i think it's not possible actually building integrated photovoltaic is another very interesting application building integrated means uh, what uh, the pv or photovoltaic panels are integrated into the building elements or even uh, even used instead of a building element okay here you can see an application for example the PV uh, this is another application as a curtain another one as the wall another one here this is another one for example this is in Suntech factory in China you can see here 
from the I took the picture from the inside you can see here the solar cell and you if you take the picture from uh, a close-up view uh, you can see here the solar cells and the space in between can you take can you uh, imagine what what's the reason for this uh, space two seconds think about that yes it's for light for the light to come into the building this is a uh, roof integrated solar panel actually these panels uh, works instead of roof actually there is no roof tiles here and the most important ones if you heard about that are tesla roof tiles pv may also be applied to the building as we name them building applied photovoltaic or bapv here you can see some guys here are uh, attaching uh, the PV panel which are generally of the thin film type as we'll discuss about them later to the roof of a workshop and this is also a very good in application very interestingly PV can be applied as a solar noise barrier because it's uh, you you know solar noise barriers have a lot of surface area generally and uh, why do not use them as a power generator you may say that these are not at the good orientation or even at a good tilt yes quite right but generally there are a lot of area available and why not use it for solar power generation okay now come back to the application of solar energy to the building i want to focus my um, uh, presentation now to the uh, to these applications there generally we have at least uh, in Iran have uh, some type of application. The first application is for the governmental organization or governmental buildings. Okay, the building or organization which are owned by the government. In this type of application, as you can see here, a solar park. <coughs> here, uh, please note that uh, these are not allowed to sell the power and they should use the power provided by the solar panel themselves and this is uh, uh, something that have been agreed some years back I translated it here governments uh, government agencies must supply at least 20% of their buildings electricity from renewable energy within two years actually it does not ha it did not happen uh, as 20 percent as as planned actually uh, i'm saying that what is achieved is much less than what is planned but but uh, but it may be alive it may become become alive again in the future and this is a very good opportunity for the companies who work in solar energy in the future uh, so governmental organizations are not allowed to sell their electricity they should use it themselves Another application for the PV is residential solar. You can see here uh, two cases uh, with they are in Iran and uh, generally they use it for what? Can you imagine? For example, the owner of this building, uh, what, what he or she do with, uh, the, uh, with the power provided by the solar panel? I mean, uh, does it used by the homeowner or he for example or she may sell it think about that and I'll answer it in a few minutes commercial solar is another application after residential for example you can see here an application where the solar panels are are installed on the roof of a factory or store or build large building for example still utility scale solar uh, farms as we name them as they say or another application these are so just some examples of uh, big solar farms in Iran for example in Malart near Karaj and Hamadan, Svan, Kerman a lot more which are installed and it's clear that these farms are uh, for selling the power provided by the solar panels another very interesting application which is new I mean by new I mean for example within the past maybe 10-15 years uh, which are floating solar farms there are some discussion about that for example some people say that it has some environmental effects but uh, from the technical point of view it has some advantages and uh, I advise again to do search about that to see the pro and cons of a, 
of this application. So let's see what are the possible connection methods of a solar system to the building. We have three sides of the story. The first is the solar panels located, for example, on the roof of the building or roof of the factory or something else, or even on the ground, because different uh, installations are possible, and we'll discuss about those installations later. There's the consumer a building, or in general, a consumer here, and there's a grid. Okay, we want to see what are the possible connection methods. The first is an off-grid system or a stand-alone system. Off-grid or stand-alone. In this system, you feed the power directly from the PV to the consumer. And as I uh, written here, I've written here, it's not possible when grid power, it's not feasible when grid power is available because you know when the grid power is available, uh, then you may uh, made, it may be a better choice to use the grid power. Either someone push you to use, for example, the power from the PV. This system may be provided by the here. Uh, an off-grid inverter also may be provided if your appliances are AC appliances. I discussed about that later. So the first method is off-grid, either an AC or DC. The system generally needs a battery Please note that the system needs a battery. It may be batteryless, but generally it needs battery because you may need the power in the nights, for example, for lighting. Come to the next one. The next method is bidirectional. Uh, is a grid connected system or ungrid grid connected or ungrid system. The first method in on-grid system is a bi-directional or as they say net metering net metering system in this system the power from the pv as you can see after passing through a grid connected inverter and if you note there's a difference this is a off grid this is an off grid inverter and this is a grid connected inverter we'll discuss about the differences later and there are very big differences and you cannot use them uh, instead of each other so uh, for the time being just just please note that this is a grid connected inverter in this system the power from the PV is connected to the consumer side see this is the consumer this is the meter and the power is connected to the consumer side this is a two-way meter what is two-way meter the two-way meter means that it can me measure the energy which is transferred either to the right or to the left, even there may be differences in the tariffs between the two, and it calculates it. So, in this system, you can fit the power from the PV to your home, you may take the power from the grid, or you may fit the power from the PV to the grid. So, we name it a net metering system, and it is not a still feasible in Iran, why? Because the electricity tariff from the grid for us in Iran is low. If in the future there are some changes, for example, in the power, in the price of the PV system or some change in the grid electricity price, then the system may, may be feasible. As an exercise, I request you to provide a list of some countries, for example, at least 10, 20 countries, uh, and uh, in, uh, in, uh, provide them in a table and in the table write that which one, which country uh, use uh, the grid, uh, the net metering system, which one use the other system, which I'll show in another slide. Uh, this is an exercise for you. Please do that. I'll let you know later how to send them for me. But this is a, uh, uh, as the first row of the table, please use your country wherever you are. This is the next system. This is a, still a grid connected system where the grid is used as a backup. In this system, as you can see, there is no difference. Please see the differences. I'll change over between the two. I'll switch the two. This is the previous one. This is the new one. In this system, this is your existing meter, electricity meter in your home. 
the power from the PV is again connected to the consumer side but you can see that there is no arrow to the, to the left what does it mean? it means that you cannot sell the power to the grid you use the PV panels the power or energy provided by the PV for yourself if it is actually what's what's the benefit for you the benefit is that your bill your electricity bill will be decreased what's the benefit for the electricity provider the benefit is that the consumers use less power from the grid especially for example in the summer that there's a lot of pressure on the grid then they may help them okay uh, actually if there is no bonuses available for using this no one may use this system for example in Iran but there are plans started from actually it's it's very new we had this some years back and it was unsuccessful and now in the last month uh, a plan is uh, a price the name is Barg Omid or hoop electricity in English uh, in this system, the government provides a loan uh, to the consumers, to the consumers, and they may, for example, install solar panels on their roof to decrease their electricity bill. Let's see how it will be successful in how much it will be successful in the future or not. So this is the next method, and this is another one. In this system again the system is a grid connected system but we name it gross metering or feeding tariff actually feeding tariff means that you feed the power provided by the panel which uh, passes through the uh, through the grid connected inverter to a new meter as you can see here and then to, to the grid let's have a review again this is your existing meter you take your power from the grid see this is your existing meter, the red one, and you take your power from the grid. But sell the power provided by the PV panel, your PV panel, to the grid through another meter. This is a new one. The green one is a new meter, which, as you can see here, please note to the arrow, it measures the energy provided by your PV panel. So you will enjoy from the money <coughs> from the green one and you pay the bill for the red one actually this is the common method which is generally used in Iran in most of the building you can see that there are solar panels above except the governmental ones I just want to repeat except the governmental ones for the private buildings or organizations generally they sell a power through the method I shown here if you want to know more about the rules and investment opportunities and the regulations and anything about the photovoltaic uh, grid connection and the, uh, the I, I refer you to the website of Ministry of Energy, Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Organization, uh, SATPA. SATPA actually is an abbreviation of the Persian name, uh, but uh, you may name it also as Satpa. The website is shown here in the bottom, and you may pro it, 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 they will provide the, the site is both in Persian and English, and they'll provide a lot of information about this. And this is the last exercise for you today. Uh, please do a search on what are photovoltaic applications in your country. And I want to add that what are the regulations about photovoltaic in your country? Uh, please uh, provide a text in a text form. Provide some, for example, in one page, in very short, maximum one page. Uh, do this exercise and send it for me. I'll uh, explain later how to send this to me because during the pandemic there is no physical class and you should send it online. I'll uh, inform you the method which you should send it. Thank you. Take care. This is the end of our today's session. 
in the next session we will discuss about the photovoltaic modules their construction and some details about the PV module specification goodbye